My name is Danielle. My name is Cassidy. We love you, Glamma. Oh, I love you too, Glamma girls. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Made with Love by Glamma. Glamma here, your host for today. And thank you so much for watching that commercial or ad at the beginning of this video. I truly appreciate it. It helps me to continue to bring these tutorials to you for free. So thank you so much. Today we're going to be making this little newborn tube anklet sock. <laughs> so yeah, I'm so excited. And the reason that I came up with this design is because I'm going to be having another Glamma baby soon. Yay! She'll be here in about four months. I can't wait. Another Glamma baby to hold and to spoil and love and kiss. <laughs> So yeah, I came up with this design because it's been a long time since I've had a baby in the family. So I don't know how small or big um, babies' feet are these days, <laughs> or any days. But <laughs> since I don't have an actual baby to measure um, the socks to, I guess I could go online and do some research for the average size newborn foot. But I thought, you know what, instead of doing that, I'm just going to make a tutorial like my adult tube sock. And because with tube socks, you can pull the sock up as high or as low as you want. If it's a bigger foot, then obviously it won't go up as high. If it's a little bitty foot, then it'll go up higher on the baby's leg. So I think a tube sock is perfect because there's no actual heel, so it'll fit any size. <laughs> this particular tutorial that we're going to be making today, because of the size of hook that I'm using, it's going to fit from a newborn to about maybe three months old, okay? If you want to make this for a bigger baby, then just go ahead and use a hook size or two bigger, okay? Alrighty, I'll let you know what you'll be needing for this tutorial. I'm using Burnett Softy Baby yarn in the color Lemon, and I'm using a 2.50 millimeter hook. You'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and a stitch marker. And you'll also need a row counter if you have one. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so these are my notes for the little sock that I made. I kind of just made it on the fly and I had, a re I had to rewrite these notes so many times before I got the sock to the size that I wanted. But, um, so yeah, this is what I'll be following. I'll be following my own notes and I'm going to try to get this, um, pattern on my website for any of y'all that might need written pattern of it. The only reason I don't usually put written patterns on my website or on my channel is because I don't know how to write patterns, um, I guess, the proper correct way. So to me, these are just my little notes, but if y'all don't mind um, reading patterns in my own little way of talking. <laughs> So I don't know if you would understand something like this. Two slip stitch in the same stitch, two single crochet in the next, two half double crochet in the next, two double crochet in the next, and in the remaining stitches. So you would just follow this throughout the whole row. So anyway, so I don't know exactly how to write patterns. That's why I don't do it. I can follow them. I just don't have the verbiage to actually write them out myself. So anyway, um, I guess I can put this up on my website and call it Glamour's Layman's Terms. Um, crochet pattern. <laughs> so if you guys are interested in getting written patterns that are in my own um, way of speaking, because basically I would be writing it the way that I teach it on my tutorials. Rather, because I know that a lot of people have a hard time understanding actual crochet patterns, um, how to follow them. I thought, well, everyone seems to be okay following my tutorials and how I explain them verbally. So if I write them the way I speak on the tutorials, maybe they'll be okay with um, getting written patterns like that. So let me know down below if you would like to see Glamour's Layman's patterns written down in on my website for y'all. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, we're going to make a magic ring. And this Bernat baby yarn actually calls for a 4.0 millimeter hook, which I believe is a G hook, but um, I'm using this size hook because I want it to be for a newborn. So using the G hook would have probably made it more for like a six month old. So if that's the size of sock that you need, go ahead and use a 4.0 millimeter hook. 
but I'm using this one which makes the uh, stitches a bit tighter but it's still really soft all right let's make a magic ring to make a magic ring you start off just like you're making a slip knot you grab that back yarn and with this ring finger I bring up the yarn and I bring it through that loop and there's your magic ring or magic circle whatever you want to call it so now I'm going to chain two one and two I'm going to be making double crochets but I'm going to use that first little loop as if it's a chain because that kind of gives me the height that I need for my double crochets and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to put 10 double crochets into this magic ring okay all right so let's do that put 10 double crochets into the magic ring wait am I even in the shot I'm sorry guys there you go most of y'all know how to make double crochets but let me make one more for those of y'all that are new yarn over go into the ring pull up a loop yarn over go through two yarn over go through two all right do that all the way until you've got 10 um, double crochets plus that initial chain that we made all right see you in a bit okay so I've got my 10 double crochets now and now you can pull on that little tail and close up your magic ring and now we're going to close up the ring completely okay and to do so I am going to ignore that chain because I'm using that as a filler and I'm going to go into the very first double crochet that I made and close it with a slip stitch okay and now I'm going to chain one and right there in that same double crochet where I just slip stitched I'm going to make two more slip stitches okay there's one and in that very first one you'll want to grab your stitch marker and mark it right there because that's going to be the beginning of our next row okay that's where we're going to close it when we come back around and then we'll move that stitch marker up each time okay so there's one slip stitch and here's a second this yarn is so hard to work with because I'm using an itty bitty hook <laughs> okay so there's two slip stitches and now in the next double crochet from the previous row we're gonna make two single crochets okay there's one and there's two okay and now we're gonna make two half double crochets in the next one so we yarned over inserted our hook pulled up a loop now we have three loops and we're going to yarn over and go through all three so there's one half double crochet here's our second go through all three okay now we're going to make two double crochets in the next stitch and this is the stitch that we're going to use throughout the whole sock double crochets there's my second double crochet <clears throat> so the reason why I didn't start off with double crochets is because then it, the stitch would have been this tall at the beginning and I want to work in a spiral so I don't want to have to connect with a slip stitch each time so what I do is I start off with slip stitches and then single crochets and then half double crochets and then I get to the stitch that I want I gradually um, get to the stitches that are taller you see so that when I come all the way around I can just make a double crochet right into that stitch and then move the marker up and we can just go around in a spiral like that yay so it'll be a nice seamless sock all right so now we're going to just put two double crochets in all of the remaining stitches till we get to the stitch marker okay there's one and there's two and we're just going to do that all the way until we get around this way and then I'll meet you there okay so I'm at the end of row two if you didn't click your row counter for row two go ahead and click it now I'm sorry I don't think I told you to do that so I put two double crochets in each of the stitches and now I'm ready to close it up 
and because we put the stitch marker there we know that that's where we want to close it up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a double crochet right into that instead of doing a slip stitch I'm just going to continue with my double crochets and it'll be nice and seamless okay so just go into the same stitch where the stitch marker is I'm being lazy I'm not taking the stitch marker out that's why I'm having a hard time <laughs> and just pull up a loop go through two and go through two okay and now you can put the stitch marker right into this stitch right here okay and each time you get to this stitch right there you're going to double crochet into it and then move the marker up into that new stitch that you just made all right so there's one double crochet into that stitch and now we are going to make one double crochet into each of the remaining stitches all right from here on out okay don't forget that little it's going to be really hard to see it because it's just a little slip stitch but don't forget right next to that is another slip stitch so go into that and make a double crochet okay there you go let me get some more yarn and now right here are the two single crochets that we made so go ahead and go into that first single crochet and then into that second single crochet okay and now we're getting into the half double crochets we're going to put one single I mean one double crochet into that I'm losing my stitches okay here's the second half double crochet put once one double crochet into that and now here are the double crochets and now we're just going to continue with one double crochet in each of the stitches all the way around okay so this is the beginning of row three so don't forget to click your row counter and so we're going to continue doing that just one double crochet in each of the stitches okay so here I am at the end of row three and I've reached the stitch with the stitch marker so I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to put a double crochet right into that stitch where the stitch marker is okay and I'm going to move the stitch marker up okay we're going to do that for every single row move the stitch marker up so that we know where a new row is and now click your row counter and you're on row four okay and so just keep making one double crochet in each stitch all the way around all right all righty simple enough right just like all of glamo's patterns i try to make them as easy as possible all right so this is row four finish row four double crochet into that move the stitch marker up then you'll be on row five and i'll meet you back here when you are at the end of row seven and as you can see it's already starting to form like a little like a little cup <laughs> a little tube so by the time we get to row seven it'll probably be about this long and uh, this is the wrong side the side that has the tail is the wrong side and this is the right side of the sock and so i will meet you back here at the end of row seven have fun okay so here I am at the end of row seven and what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue putting one double crochet into each of the stitches but instead of using a 2.50 millimeter hook for these next rows I'm going to switch to a 3.50 millimeter hook because it'll make it because you know how right here it's wider on our feet that way it'll go up the heel and then when I get done with this portion then we're going to go back to the smaller hook again which is exactly what I did on my adult tube sock as well just to make it easier to bring the sock up over your heel alright so I'm gonna grab my 3.50 millimeter hook and I'm going to continue so I'm gonna go right into the stitch with a stitch marker whoops And I'm going to bring up a loop and I'm going to make my double crochets with this bigger sized hook okay so now let's bring the stitch marker up to the new double crochet that we just made all right you can already see 
that that stitch is bigger than that one just by switching to um, a different size hook. Alrighty, so now we're just going to continue making one double crochet into each of the remaining stitches and this is row 8 so don't forget to click your row counter and so continue doing this now until you get to the end of row 11 and then I will meet you back here okay okay so here I am at the end of row 11 and this is what it's looking like you can see that it's a little bit wider up here than it is here the stitches are a little looser because we used a bigger hook but now I'm going to switch back to the 2.50 millimeter hook and we are going to do the exact same thing but with the smaller hook now and we're just going to make double crochets in each of the stitches okay now go ahead and move that stitch marker up and this is the beginning of row 12 and we're just going to continue the same way one double crochet in each stitch and then when we get here move the stitch marker up and we're going to do this until the end of row 15 however when you get to the end of row 15 meet me when you get to um two stitches before the end of the row okay so meet me when you get to about right there leave the last two stitches unworked and that's where i will meet you back all right okay so i am close to the end of row 15 i still have one two three stitches before I reach the stitch with the stitch marker but I want to make a gradual decline okay because we're gonna be doing something different here so now what I want to do in the next stitch I want to yarn over I want to go into the next stitch and make a half double crochet okay so we're making a shorter stitch and now in the next stitch we're gonna make an even shorter one we're gonna make a single crochet all right and in the stitch where the stitch marker is we're going to make a slip stitch all right awesome okay and now what we're going to do so you see how by doing so you see how it makes it nice and flush it makes it nice and even see if you ever wanted to end your work that's a good way to end your work to make it nice and flat when you're working in a spiral it brings it all back to the same level okay so now let me get my hook back in here all right okay and so now i'm going to chain one and i'm going to turn my work around and what i'm going to do is right here in this exact same space I'm going to just be working in the back loops only okay because that is how we're going to get the uh, little ankle part that flips down we're going to get it to stay flipped down permanently okay by working on the back loops only all right so let me find the stitch that I want okay right here I'm going into the next stitch right there let me see no, nope, I'm going to go right back into the same stitch where I was, but I'm going to grab the back loop only and I'm going to make a slip stitch again. Okay, and right here I'm going to put my stitch marker right on that slip stitch that I just made. Okay, and so now right there on my next stitch I'm going to make a single crochet okay and this is going to be an increase row because i want it to kind of like flare out so that it's nice and big see how this is nice and and wide compared to the actual sock i wanted it to be kind of a very um roughly looking sock so i'm going to put a second single crochet right into that same stitch okay and then in the next one i'm going to put one half double crochet so yarn over and in the back loop only put a half double crochet okay and then in the next stitch see how we're making a gradual incline in the next stitch we're going to put two double crochets so we're making it an increase row but we're doing it by gradually making the stitches taller so there's one double crochet in the back loop 
and here's a second one. And now that we're back to the stitch that we're working with, we're going to stick with double crochets now. So in the next one, I'm just going to make one double crochet. Okay, and in the next one, I'm going to put two double crochets in the back loop only. Okay. There's one, and there's two, and now we're going to put one in the next back loop, and now two in the next one, and we're going to continue that way till we reach the stitch marker, okay? So meet me back here when you get to the end of your row where the stitch marker is, alright? But let me show you what that's doing. You see how it's creating a little ridge right there? Well, it's going to, see, it's going to automatically keep it to where it's a permanent fold in the sock. And that's what I did right there. So, yeah. All righty, continue that way. We just did two double crochets in that stitch. Now make one in the next stitch, working in the back loops only. Meet me back here at the end of the row. All right, have fun. I'm at the end of row 16, and you see the nice little ridge there, and it's got a nice little permanent fold there. And I've reached the part where the stitch marker is. So I'm going to make a double crochet into there. But now we're going to be using both loops, okay? Not just the back loops. Let me see. Yeah, like that. Okay, so grab both loops and make your double crochets. All right? And the reason why I, when we got to the beginning of row 16, I turned my work around is because um, I wanted to, since this is going to be permanently folded down, I want to be working on this side of the work, okay? Because this is the part that's going to be showing, so you want this to be the right side of your work now, and you want the wrong side to be the underside, like that, okay? So we want the side that's going to be showing to be, to match this. This is the right side, and inside is the wrong side. So let's take our stitch marker out and put it in this new stitch. Click your row counter for row 17. Let me click mine. Okay, and now we are going to put one double crochet in each of the stitches using both loops in the stitches, okay? Okay, so just one double crochet in each stitch. All right simple as that. So do this for row 17 and then when you get to the end of row 18 meet me back here when you have let me see one the stitch with the marker in it two three meet me back here when you've done your last double crochet into that stitch okay and then I will tell you what to do next. Okay, so here I am close to the end of row 18, and I've still got one, two, three stitches before the stitch marker stitch, and I'm going to make another decline. So let's make a half double crochet into the next stitch. Okay, and now a single crochet into that next one. <clears throat> and then right here, I forgot to tell you that I'm going to be using a second color. I'm going to be using white because I forgot that I used white right here. See, you can barely tell, but I did use white right there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook into the stitch where the stitch marker is. I'm going to drop the yellow, and I'm going to pick up the white. Okay, and I'm going to switch colors, and I'm going to slip stitch. Alright, so there's our slip stitch. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my 3.50 millimeter hook. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And I'm going to put the stitch marker right over here. Okay actually on the third chain. I'm going to put it on the third chain. One, two, three. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to skip the next stitch and I'm going to double crochet 
into this one right here. Okay, and now I'm going to chain one, yarn over, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the next one. Okay, chain one, yarn over, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the next one. Chain one, yarn over, skip that stitch, and double crochet into the next one. Do that all the way around, and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so that's what it's looking like. I'm going to insert my hook at the third chain that we first started with. I'm going to drop the white, pick up the yellow again. Okay. And I'm going to slip stitch right here. And I'm going to cut the white yarn now because I'm done with the white. I'm going to tie the white tail with the yellow right here. Make a little knot and then I'll weave that white tail in later. Or maybe I'll incorporate it as I go along right now. Okay, so I don't really need the stitch marker anymore. You can get rid of that for now because you'll, by the time you come around, you'll know where it is that you started. So this is our last row, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to single crochet into that chain one space. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make five double crochets into that same chain one space, and I think I'm going to incorporate that white tail that we just cut off, okay, so that we don't have to weave it in later. New message from Adam. Okay, there's one, and there's two, and there's three. and four, and five. And now we started with a single crochet. We're going to end with a single crochet into that same space. All right. And now we're going to go into the next chain one space and do the same thing. Single crochet. And then we're going to do five double crochets. and then we're going to end it with a single crochet. Okay, so that's what we're going to do all the way around in all the chain one spaces and we're going to I can probably cut that tail now, that white tail cuz I think we've incorporated it enough. And that's it. That's our final step of our sock. So I will see you back around this end when you're done with your last shell and then we'll end it together. All right? So yeah, see, we're at this part right here. Super easy sock, isn't it? Isn't it looking adorable? <laughs> Cute little tube sock. Okay, so here I am at the end of my little shells and I did my single crochet, five double crochets, single crochet, and now I am going to slip stitch here at the beginning where we started. Okay? There we go. And then I'm going to chain one so that we can finish off. Get your scissors, leave a bit of a tail so you can weave it in. And voila, we're done. <laughs> Alright, just snug that down. And there is your sock. We're going to go weave in our, our little tails and stuff. And don't forget about the tail on the inside of the sock, okay, so that it doesn't come apart on the wire in the wash. So I'm going to go do that and then I will be back to say goodbye to y'all. So here we are. I weaved in all my tails and everything and here is the finished tube sock. This is what it looks like off of the foot. That's what it looks like on the foot. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial guys and I uh, 
put up a little video asking for winter requests from y'all and this was on y'all's list you wanted baby items so I went ahead and designed this little um, pattern for a sock for a newborn and like I said if you want to make this bigger then you can just use a couple size hooks up tube socks can fit pretty much any size so that's why I made it a tube sock so all right, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my little baby doll and then I'll take a picture for the thumbnail. And there's the baby with both socks on. Adorable, yay! <laughs> Came out so cute, I love it. Can't wait for my glamo baby to wear it. Alrighty guys, I love you so much and don't forget to meet me back here every week for a new tutorial. Alrighty guys, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for watching our Glamos channel.